Anyway, here's Louie. Check this out. I had this thing again where I thought I ran over a guy. Did you run over a guy? No. I was on the phone, which I know is bad. I shouldn't have done that. Who were you on the phone with? My mother. Okay, so it starts out a terrible scene. Never film with white walls unless you know what you're doing. And remember, everything's kind of being color corrected and nicer through our cameras and stuff. But here is Joe List, Louis C.K., and they're making an indie feature, everybody. Remember Louis' last movie that it, he couldn't release because of, it was too pedophilic around the masturbating? What a fucking pussy, by the way. You jacked off. Come out of hiding already. Did he ever release that movie on his no, own I don't know. I don't know. And Louis C.K. is the biggest bitch. You got <laughs> caught wienering it. You know? That would be like if I was in a hiding. You know how many? I've done that Louis C.K. move to thousands of women. They just haven't <laughs> reported it. Um, and if they did, I'd go, Every So what, suckers? Suck my cum! Like, who cares? You saw a dick. That's not a rape. Um, I'll never believe in that. You know, I'll still make fun of Louie. So here's Joe Liz. He's sitting on the couch, and it's uh, like a therapist scene. And it's shot really bad. The audio is bad. And I'm going to tell you what the main issue was that nobody is understanding here. Circus cake. You're coming up on what? Two and a half years? Three in November. Listen, you show up late. I haven't heard from you. Ooh, You're I hate that shot. Ooh, do I hate that shot. So it's um, it's jazzy, right? And there's a couple things going on here. I'm going to save the second one for later. The first thing is, Louis tries to do the Woody Allen thing, okay? That's, uh, you know, very easy to see, but he's not doing it good, I hated his effects show, Louie. To me, that was a film school series of things he was trying to pull off but doesn't have the talent to do, okay? He shoots his movies himself. He edits them himself. He's probably trying to color correct them himself. He's doing way too much writing, starring in them, directing. Very admirable. He doesn't have the talent He's a stand-up comedian. It took him 25 years to get a laugh, okay? And now he wants to do a job that you need at least 190 people for to do. You hear that, Louie, you asshole? You need 190 people minimum to make a movie, not just you. Um, so that's the main problem. So don't get confused with, oh, no, he's doing this on purpose. Sure, he's... Kind of doing it on purpose, but it's not good. It's still bad. Okay, watch. And then I'll show you the next part. Teetering. Either lean forward, take the next step, or lean back, fall down a flight of stairs. When do I get to that point? Well, I've been sober about three years. No, I'm talking to the point where I'm speaking in bumper stickers. Oh, Bob Kelly. I'm going to Maine on Tuesday. I'm going alone. I have to go and confront my parents and say all this shit that's been destroying me. I have to go say it. It's time. All right, sounds good. Going home sober, always tough. The folks and he likes to do he likes to do the sentimental thing. Again, he's not good enough to be this sentimental and make it work. Why can't you just start try making a light comedy first without the sentimental stuff? Trying to be all your heroes at once in one movie. Hell, they even installed them. Hey, needle dick! Oh, oh, gotta, you want I kill? Him. Oh my God! It's Cal, Damn. everybody. Look at that. He looks good. Full racist, by the way. That's a real racist. Nick DiPaolo and Anthony Cumia are true, actual, <laughs> N-hating, N-word racists. <laughs> uh, and they really are. Uh, and that's the difference. And to still pal around with Nick DiPaolo, it means two things. You haven't watched his show in years. You don't read his tweets. And you're not doing your due diligence. Sorry. It's like Joe Rogan is best friends with Anthony Cumia still, and we'll show you they were just talking yesterday. For him to be friends with Anthony Cumia is insane at where he is in his career. And we're going to show you a couple updates with Cumia to show you. Look at see. Cal in this image. Can't you see yeah. him dancing beside a jukebox? So the, the new thing all my 58-year-old enemies are doing now with no shame is TRT and hormone replacement therapy. I hate to break it to you, boomers. That's the same thing as becoming 
trans. Yes. <laughs> the thing you all despise the most that you can't stop talking about for five years straight as 55-year-old men. What happened to these 55-year-old comedians? They just can't get over this. But you're all taking hormone therapy, too, to be big and strong in your late 50s. An age where you're supposed to slowly die down and die off. You need to be powerful and strong and all cuckoo and crazy. That's pretty female to male, bro. That's fucking female to male, bro. And who are you trying to impress? You all have wives. You know, are you that sad? You know, who gives a fuck what you're, who gives a fuck what you look like anymore? That's the one thing this disease really taught me. You got to get over this looks stuff. Really? You're any, still handsome. Forget that though. But any more than 10 minutes in a mirror is too much. Don't worry. You know how many hours of my life I spent going, oh, is my hair okay? Is my hair okay? Is it okay? Is it okay? It's so stupid and no one cares. Nobody fucking cares. So when I see 58-year-old men worried about their looks, like Nick DiPaolo, Joe Rogan, Anthony Cumia, your face is deformed, bro. No one cares if you've got traps. (laughs) It's not helping. You know, just put the Kanye mask over your face. That's more of an upgrade than the fucking TRT or whatever you're on. Right, back to the trailer. I, I don't drink, uh, Kevin. No, 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 no. Smell that. How are you, his uncle? You guys look the same age. We were drinking buddies since we were 10 and 12, but he's a quitter. Hey, Mom, Dad, I need to talk to you guys. So talk. Here we are. I've been grappling with some issues. I wanted to talk about you never showed me, like, love. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> You never showed me love. You never. How about a movie about how Louis C.K. Uh, is terribly embarrassed to show his face. And every time he does, he's like still uncomfortable. And he hangs out with Shane Gillis now, <laughs> who is not cool. He's not one of the good ones. He's a fucking re. OK. Um, uh, this movie is really pathetic and lame. Seems like a drag. And here's what Louis did. Hold on. I'm going to end on. A, Sorry, hon. What? On a Louis shot. <laughs> Play nice, everyone. Oh, yeah. How dare you? Perhaps if you'd been a better wife, knock it off. All right, all right, all right, all right. Dude, take it too far. Oh, shut up. Who's asking you? What's the family stuff you're going Okay, to? so that's a great shot. People go, why is it shot so bad? It must be on purpose. I'll tell you why. Louis decided, this is what I believe. Ooh, I hope I'm right. <laughs> Louis decided he's going to be so cool, right, and shoot on film. Yeah, okay shoot on film so what he did is he went out and rented some film cameras from lensrentals.com he rented some cheap film cameras by the way not the good ones and he rented some cheap cinema lenses all right and he probably is using cheap stock and getting it developed at a place that isn't that good and then he's trying to color correct it himself so with film of course you don't get it you know, uh, a lot of chances to reshoot, right? You're burning actual physical 35 millimeter film. And when you're doing it poorly on cheap cameras with no experience and thinking, I'm Louis C.K., I'll just try it. Uh, it's going to come out amateur like this. That's why these shots don't all match up. Some are like overexposed or underexposed. Some of the framing is really wild because you can't just reshoot on the fly. That's why it looks and feels like shit. He went out of his way to be Mr. Cool Guy with the film, but he didn't do it right. He did it all hodgepodge, and it would have looked better on a dang iPhone at this point. Do you think in this backyard scene, one of the uncles is going to take it too far in football and tackle someone too hard? Yes, yes. I'm surprised (laughs) that's not in the trailer with the... uh, the (gasps) You know, the football tackle sound. And then the guy's slowly getting up. Yeah, let's see. What's happening? They're drunks. They're assholes. Honestly, I can't even believe I'm in this family. Every time you go to Maine, you say you're going to confront your parents. And when you come back, you always... And by the way, List is like the worst actor. We've seen (laughs) everything that he's ever done. You know, and Louis is going to pretend, oh, no, it's good like that. It'll make it seem like, you know, Woody Allen-y, like, uh, you know. No! It's absolutely... And who are these people, huh? You're okay with the masturbating? Cancel them!
Someone in the chat says, have... who's trying to piss you off. Probably. No, then don't tell me. Then don't <laughs> tell me. Film is cool. Don't be jelly. But it's like we're not saying all film is bad oh my God. for movies, you know, obviously. I'm telling you, <laughs> half of what I say goes in one ear and then gets jammed in the other. Uh, you know, nobody ever listens to what I'm fully saying. <laughs> they hear me say one thing and then they think, are you fucking out of your mind? Like as if that's what I meant. Get him. Everybody attack that guy. <laughs> You know, physically assault him. In too good a time, you didn't want to ruin it. You don't think I'll do it? I hate it here. What kind of people are you? What kind of people are we? And for stuff like that, can the listeners please explain to those guys what I <laughs> actually mean so I don't have to waste air time and my breath? Remember, my Sorry. breath is sacred. My breath is sacred. <laughs> it's taking away from my, the end of the show. Every time I got to scream. Bro, you gotta make this right. I get you working out your thing, but just go say you're sorry. I'm not sorry, Mark. By the grace of heaven, you're in this family, and we know like every chick you welcome home to roost. We know that when your foolish dreams leave you dry, it's your family you will need. That was crazy. Is this the same trailer we saw the first time? Yep. That I went over twice? Wow, I don't remember any of this. <laughs> Fourth of July. It's Directed, like, directed, edited, produced. He's done it all. He was the gaffer. So really stupid, really embarrassing. And um, I, I, uh, I, I just hope it's a flop. 